Hi there, it's Paul again. This time we're going to be looking at some data analytics success stories. The first is a really interesting one. Uh, and it's interesting because it has a link to UTS, our university. So this one's all about trying to catch the backpacker killer. So it's related to Australia's most notorious serial murder case. So back in the early 1990s, there were um, seven young backpackers were murdered, German backpackers. And their bodies were dumped in uh, Belangelo State Forest, which is just outside Sydney on the way to Canberra. And the police had developed a profile for the murderer. Um, and they did this by putting together a huge data set. So they had vehicle records, gym memberships, gun licensing records, police records. And when they put all of these um, data sets together and made a list of um, suspects, they found that they had 18 million of them. Now, of course, the police force is nowhere near well enough resourced to check independently through 18 million resources. So they used this software called uh, Limp, um, NetMap Analytics, and they were, using that software, they were able to narrow down the set of suspects down about 320 and then down again to 32. And it turned out that of the people, of those 32 um, suspects, uh, Ivan Malat, who was, the, who was eventually um, jailed as being the murderer, was on that list. Uh, the nice UTS link is that NetMap Analytics was developed by one of our professors from the business school at that stage, a man called uh, Professor John Galloway. So this is a good example of that first type of data analytics where we're just trying to understand the data. We're not necessarily trying to make a prediction. This one's an example of trying to make a prediction. Uh, so you would have had the experience of um, going onto Amazon, buying a book, and when you buy a book, it suggests other books that you might want to buy. And that suggestion of other books that you might want to buy is essentially a a predictive uh, machine learning problem, a supervised machine learning problem. So based on what you've bought previously and how you're similar to other people, it makes it, it um, predicts which books you're likely to read. This one's another good example of a predictive machine learning or supervised machine learning one. This one is uh, predicting the 2012 US election result. So there's a guy called Nate Silver who used predictive analytics and statistics to correctly predict the outcomes of all 50 of the 50 states from polling and related data. And the Republicans were sort of confident that, that they would get a landslide win. The Democrats thought that they would probably win, but they weren't sure. But Nate Silver was able to build a model that, was cor that correctly predicted this. Uh, and this really showed the idea of using a data-centric approach to make a decision rather than using the gut feeling, which is what the pundits were doing. That said, in 2016, it worked pretty spectacularly bad. He wasn't able to predict that um, Donald Trump would be would be elected. So um, there's various reasons for that. Um, maybe I'll let you look that that kind of thing up on the on the internet. Uh, this is another example from Walmart. So um, this one's uh, so Walmart is a is a large um, retailer in the U.S. So it has five, at least 5,000 stores over 15 countries. So it's many companies. Um, and the story relates to trying to understand what are the trends in, in customer behavior. It's sort of like a myth in data mining and data analytics, and it's probably not totally true, but it's a good story. So the idea is that they combine data from their loyalty card program with the point of sale data. So the first kind of data has demographic data about their customers, so where they live and their gender and things like that. The second thing is about what they bought and when they bought it. And then they sent some of the things that they found were really obvious. So people who buy gin also buy lemon. But they found something that was really unexpected. And in data analytics, something that's unexpected is often really interesting and useful to know. So they found that on Friday afternoons, young males who buy nappies, so if you're American, diapers, um, are also likely to buy beer. So this is, seems like a really odd thing. So why would people that buy nappies also buy beer? And no one would have thought to have queried that. So this is this is a good example when data where data mining can find something, but not just writing a, a SQL query can find it. So they went off and investigated what was happening, and they found um, this story: um, young guys like to go out drinking with their mates on Friday nights, and that usually involves buying beer. So young guys only buy nappies after they have children 
but when they have children, they can't go out partying with their mates on Fridays because they've got to stay at home and help look after the baby. So the proud new father is walking around the store on Friday and he knows that he won't be able to go out with his mates, but there's nothing stopping him from drinking at home. So the story goes that Walmart moved the beer next to the nappies and then the beer sales increased as well. Again, it's probably not true, but it's a good example of um, being able to find interesting patterns that can then be exploited and, and, and acted on. So there's some um, success stories with data analytics, but we should also look at the failures as well. And in fact, failure is not exactly a bad thing. It is for the company, I guess, but as long as you learn what has happened and why it's happened, and then learn from that so you can make better models in the future, then failure is not such a bad thing. So we're going to look at these ones in class, but I want you to just chase these ones up yourself. So if you look up this seven big data blunders you're thankful your company didn't make, you'll find this on the internet. There's a couple, there's seven different really good examples. Um, go into Google and just type Google, search for Google gorillas, and that's a really good example of um, a data analytics fail. Um, and the last one I want you to look at is this is this website. Uh, it's all about um, using computer vision to differentiate between pictures of um, chocolate chip muffins and chihuahuas, which surprisingly look quite similar. It's a, it's a really nice example. I want to leave you just with one other example. Um, this, is you, this is a thing called an adversarial patch. This is to do with um, Im image recognition. So you can see on the top there, they recognize that picture as a banana. And you can see the classifier output on the, on the right class correctly classifies it as a banana. But if you were to put that weird patch, that sort of psychedelic patch onto the, onto the image, uh, suddenly the neural network image, the neural network classifier can no longer classify the picture as a banana. It classifies it as a toaster. And this is an example of a scary example of how some of these image classification techniques, the machine learning classifica classification techniques, in fact, neural machine learning classification techniques can be completely thrown by something that a person wouldn't... I mean, we can obviously see it's a banana with a weird stick, it was something weird, but the neural network has no understanding of what it's doing, it just gets confused. So we need to be really careful and understand the strengths but also the limitations of the methods that we're looking at.